All right, go ahead, buddy. So, one of the things that we want to figure out how to uncover in the world of sports, well, there's two things, really. One of them is social networking is great if you want to know what somebody else is doing, if you want to kind of find out where people are, or you want to sort of build your group of friends larger than you can actually get to. Right. But it's lousy for really having shared experiences live. Right, there's some cool things that you can do, you know, in the, the inauguration last year, a whole bunch of people suddenly use social media to sort of be a part of the experience, which is really cool. But with sports, we're still really trying to untap that. Because we, we, it, we haven't yet, and it's not just about adding like a giga panel to your window, right. or sticking Facebook and Twitter feeds into your video feed, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's like, how do you really sort of create this interesting balance between I got a group of buddies that I want to get online with and we want to chat like while something's going on, versus hey, there's a big play that goes on, and like how does the entire like population of people watching this suddenly cheer together? Right, so that whole experience that you have in an arena or at a stadium or at a track or whatever, where you have this combination of personal reactions and crowd reactions and people around your reactions, it's like, how do you capture that in a way that's sort of meaningful when you can't be at an event? Um, now, are you thinking mobily or on any screen? On any screen. Any screen. Uh, not, not a TV screen. Any screen that's not, any interactive screen. So, well, and, and by the way, so to be clear, uh, although I think this is now an old thought, maybe it's not. I think the answer is a screen is a screen is a screen right, anyway. Right, right, right. Right, so this, to me, it's just there's no such thing anymore. I think I'm gonna use a mobile screen differently the way I'm gonna use a TV screen, Right. but it's a screen Right. at the end of the day. I mean, it is the interesting thing about the iPad and the iPhone, right? Like, it's a, it does, it's a screen that sort of does the same thing that's different size that... I think it's gonna mess with more people's heads yeah. for a while. Right. Because they're not gonna know what to do. Right. Right? But that idea, right? That, that, that's, so that's the idea. So that's one of the things we're trying to look at and tackle and figure out is that is how do, how do I make that sort of live experience right. more social and more meaningful without having to figure out how to like connect to my Facebook page right, necessarily. Right, right. Even though, for people that have, we want to be able to do something with it. Right. But not in, I mean, it, that's the least interesting social thing, right? Like you don't go to the arena and like Twitter the person sitting next to you. You're screaming, you're yelling, you're high-fiving, like... Yeah, and, and, and I leave, you know, two hours later, I have no idea who that cat was right. next to me, right? right? And I don't really feel any need to, like, exchange or friend him or do anything right. else. It was like, dude, we, like, enjoyed a couple moments together, right. and then we were done. So what does that begin to look like? Because I'm sure... Can you talk about it? Well, I don't. You don't even know? Like, we're just throwing against the wall right now? It's like we're throwing it against the wall right now. The, the answer is we don't know yet. It, you know, look, the... The business side of social says, I need to know something about you so I can market to you, so I can profile right. with you, right. so I can do whatever, right? The the other business side says, I just need to figure out how to like know that you became an audience member for a while so I can advertise right. to you. All of those things are important at certain levels, unquestionably. I mean, What's the way media runs now? That's why we know it's important, well, right? <laughs> well, so that's going to, so different thought here, right. right? Which is an advertising thought, and then I'll get to the third one. So second thought around that is around advertising. One of the things we've been really, we've been trying to figure out, we've been sort of confounded by is that you don't realize this. Most people don't think about it. You probably think about this. Most people don't think about this. When you walk into a sporting event, you are barraged with more advertiser messages than you realize. Right. Like they are right there. Right. And they're everything from like the sign card that you hold up to the menu, right. to the back of the ticket, right, right. to the signage that's up on the on the screen and in the auditorium. Everything but the urine. E- everything. Well, <laughs> and there's a sign above that. Right, right, right. 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 You are absolutely 100% bombarded. Right. Now you've paid right anywhere between 15 bucks and 150 bucks right. easy right. to continue to be bombarded by advertising. Right. But as soon as we try to do something about that online, right. you're completely pissed off. Right. You're completely like, no, no, I don't think so. Right. Right. And some people think that you should pay for the privilege of not being bombarded with advertising. Right. But guess what? In real life, again. Although television, I mean, HBO taught us that. <laughs> well, no, that's not what HBO taught okay. us. Okay. All right. No, <laughs> see, I disagree. Okay. I think what HBO taught us is that I'm willing to pay for a certain kind of content that doesn't have to pander to companies and advertising. Okay, okay. That's what I think HBO actually taught us. All right. Is it said there's value in just consuming the content for the sake of the content with mm-hmm. no strings attached. Right, As a, right, okay. Right? Sure. So, um, and by the way, that's why they're still alive after all these years. Right. They got it, that it wasn't about the fact that it was a subscription model, they got it, it was the content. Right. 
plain and simple. Okay, so you're advertised to in the sporting arena, <laughs> and you're paying. At all the time. And by the way, if you pay $5,000 for like a suite, you're still barraged by the exact same advertising. Right. And that's, that's where I was going with oh. it, is that paying in real events, music festivals, sports events, whatever, you're not unbarraged. Right, <laughs> right. Right, you're paying for access. Right. And that's the key, and that's the thing that we're trying to figure out how to a a achieve a balance between is, how do we not necessarily remove advertising from your experience? How do we just make the access worth the advertising you're going to see? Right, right. So, so that that is posing some interesting challenges to you right now. Okay, we're at five and a half minutes. So give me the third thought. Okay, yeah, because you're going to cut all this nope. down or pick one or two. Nope. Um, I'm not. All right. Well, this, so the so the <laughs> third thought is is this, and that is the one of the things we do believe digital media has the ability to do is help you understand what you're seeing now better. Uh huh. Okay. Now people will say, "Oh, that's kind of like the you know that's the proposition of augmented reality, right?" right. I'm going to tell you that sports has an augmented reality as well. <laughs> right. Which is at any point in time, sub, sub somebody creates a, a a new they have a, they have a season high, they have a game high, uh -huh. they cross a, a threshold, they have a they have a career milestone, they suddenly tip the tables on what should have happened if you'd asked what was going to happen in the beginning of the game. They suddenly become a Cinderella story. They suddenly become right. an un, you know, they turn from an underdog to right. a, an overachiever. Their backstory changes. Their backstory changes, and they create a new front story as a result. Huh. Well, all of this happens in real time before you, but you don't know it right. unless the commentator is telling you right, right on TV or right. on radio, right. right, or you've read about this and you're following close enough to absolutely right. be geeked out enough to know. Well, what we know is that we have all this information in one form or another that we can form the same kind of an opinion. And the question is, can we do that with digital media in a way that a person doesn't have to physically tell you? Like suddenly, a, a key, a, a, something that would seem as ordinary as like, oh, there's another dunk in a game, suddenly becomes really, really important because right. that was his 1,000th dunk. It returns to the idea that story is the most important part of this. It absolutely turns to that, and that's where we're trying to get to in, in some of the work we're doing right now is we're trying to get out of life stats are important, right. and the answer is life storytelling is important. Right. And how does that interact with when you uh, just meet the guy next to you at the game who you're not going to care about tomorrow? How does that work? Right. That's, dude, that's great. That's perfect. Can we be done? Yeah. All right.